Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm happy to have you here with me today where we are going to get up to all kinds of fun in the kitchen. We are going to make three recipes that are new to me. One of them was sent to me by Jan, who is one of our subscribers here on our channel, and two other recipes I was just looking for ways to use rhubarb up because as you know, I have a ton of rhubarb to use and I just looked up these recipes and I thought they looked interesting. So we're gonna give them a try. We are going to do a pistachio rhubarb yogurt cake, which I've never tried anything even remotely like that before. So that'll be fun. The canning recipe that was sent to me by Jan is a curry rhubarb chutney. So that should be interesting as well. We are also going to do some rhubarb cookies, which sound really interesting. So we're gonna get to that. I also have some bread over in my mixer over back there that I have rising that I started this morning. So I need to get those loaves made rising again and then put into the oven. My plan today was actually to take you on a garden tour, but our weather has just been a little bit crazy over the last few weeks. We've been getting a ton of rain and we're supposed to have thunderstorms this afternoon. So if we do have time, once we're finished making all of this food, we will go out to the garden. But if not, you can look forward to a garden tour in my next video. So the first thing that we are going to do is get our canning recipe cooking because it does have to cook down a little bit. I'm using my Dutch oven here. I like using heavy bottom stuff when I am going to be cooking up anything with high level of sugar in it, just because it tends to burn less frequently in something with a heavy bottom like this. I will put the recipe recipe down in the show notes for you below. And I did have to convert this recipe. Jan is from the UK and she said that recipes in the UK will be UK measurement cups, but also Australian measurement cups, which apparently are different. And I didn't know that. So I have converted what she sent to me into Canadian cups, which I'm assuming is probably the same as Australia but I will put all of the different measurements and ways to measure out these ingredients down in the show notes for you. So no matter where you are, you'll be able to follow along. So we have three and a half cups of chopped rhubarb here, our beautiful bright red rhubarb, a half a cup of chopped onion. I have cut this recipe in half. It did call for around six pints, but because I haven't tried this one before, I wanted to do a smaller batch just to see whether or not we like it. So keep that in mind when you see the measurements down below, those are going to be for um, the full batch, which is around six, six or six pints rather. So for our seasonings, we have a teaspoon of salt. We have a two and a quarter teaspoons of curry powder, and this is a mild yellow curry that I'm using, and two and a quarter teaspoons of ginger. So we're gonna dump all that right in there. And this turned out to be seven eighths a cup of vinegar, which is three eighths of a pint or 213 milliliters and then a third a cup of raisins. So now we're just gonna cook this down until it's nice and thick and soft. So now we are going to move on to our second recipe while that one is cooking down. Let's try the pistachio rhubarb yogurt cake just cause it sounds so interesting. Uh, this is a recipe from Martha Stewart. I'll link it down in the show notes for you. And this does call for one and three quarters teaspoons of salt, but because I'm using salted pistachios and this recipe calls for plain pistachios, I am omitting the salt because my pistachios are very salty. So we have half a cup of pistachios here and we're going to put those into our food processor over here and get them ground up nice and fine. There we go. One and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and mix that up. So we're gonna grab our hand mixer and we're gonna mix together one cup of granulated sugar and one stick of butter. And into this, we are going to add two large eggs, one at a time, and one and a quarter teaspoons of vanilla. Okay, so now we're going to add our flour pistachio mixture, alternately with one cup of plain yogurt. This smells so good. 
So I have a buttered parchment lined cake pan. One of the things that you can do with this recipe is you can actually cook up your rhubarb with some sugar in the oven and then top your cake with that already kind of cooked rhubarb. But I am just going to take some sugared rhubarb like this. So I'm actually gonna slice these in half just so that they're not quite such big pieces. And then I'm going to push them into our cake like so. I had several people ask in my last video when I was showing harvesting rhubarb outside uh, what it tastes like. And it is very, very sour. <laughs> so just taking a bite of rhubarb, if it doesn't have any extra sweetening, is extremely sour. So I don't recommend eating it like that. <laughs> Although I do remember back when I was a kid, my mom would peel off the outside part of it and give it to me to chew on. And as a kid, I thought it was really good, <laughs> but now I find it extremely sour. So I'm gonna take some of this sugar and sprinkle it on the top of our cake. We're gonna bake this at 400 degrees for around an hour. We'll turn it down if it starts browning too quickly. So we'll pop it in the oven. Looks pretty already. When we serve this cake, we're gonna serve it with some yogurt. You could also serve it with some sweetened whipping cream and a little bit of stewed rhubarb on the top of that. It's gonna be so good. So now I just need to wipe my counter off and form my bread loaves. I've shared my bread recipe on here quite a few times, but we'll also do a blog post over on my blog for you. And it will also be in my new cookbook, which is going to be coming out, I think the end of August is what we're aiming for. So I'll make sure, of course, I give you guys lots of notice. And if you're on my newsletter list, then you will hear about it when we get into pre-sales right away. I'm really excited about it. It's fun. It's a lot funner or the second time around. The first time around, it was just such a huge learning curve, but I have it pretty well figured out now at this point how to do it. Now we'll let those rise again until they're nice and poofy and then we'll get on to our cookies. You might be wondering if we're getting sick of rhubarb at this point, and we're not. We love rhubarb in our house. So we have one and two thirds a cup of flour in our mixing bowl. And this recipe is from the Food Network. I'll also link that one down there for you. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda. And we'll whisk those together. I'm just gonna dump this into a, another bowl to sit so that I can use this bowl to mix all my wet ingredients and not have to dirty another one because that one already had stuff in it. One and a quarter sticks of butter, two thirds a cup of brown sugar, and we'll mix this together till it's light and fluffy. Into this, we're going to add one large egg plus one egg yolk. Adding our dry ingredients, one cup of walnuts, and a cup of chocolate chips. This recipe calls for white chocolate chips, which I don't have, so I'm just adding semi-sweet. And we're just gonna mix this in by hand and our chunks of rhubarb. This is such an odd combination of flavors. Interesting to see what it tastes like and we need to chill our cookie dough for at least an hour or overnight. In this case, we're gonna do an hour. Oh, and I should have said half pints, not pints for the chutney, but now we're gonna jar up the chutney, but I wanna try it first. That's really good too. That's delicious. I just feel like I'm getting so lucky <laughs> with all these recipes. Thank you, Jan, that's really good. Do you know what I really like about this is the little bit of heat that's in it from the curry. It's good, it's really good. So this little half one, we'll just let it cool off and put it in the fridge. We're gonna can this in our steam canner for 15 minutes. It has been absolutely 
pouring rain and the sun has finally come out but I want to quickly put together the rest of what we need to put together get the cookies in the oven and then while everything is finishing up in the kitchen we'll go and take a quick tour of the garden and I'll catch you up on what we have going on out there hey okay, now it's cookie time I am super curious about the flavor of this whole situation with these cookies so we need to make them into balls and then put some kosher salt on the top of them and then bake them in the oven at 350 for around 10 to 15 minutes or so. Rhubarb season around here basically lasts until either I run out of harvestable rhubarb or until the next thing that I can start to process and put up in the garden or in the pantry is ready. So we have some time left to go. If you have any must make rhubarb recipes. I would love it if you could email them to me and I'll see if I can make them in my next video. It's fun. And like I said, we love rhubarb in our house. So I don't mind making lots of rhubarb recipes. Things that I can preserve, the ways that I can preserve rhubarb would be especially welcome. Our bread should be coming out of the oven any minute and then we can just pop these in. All right, let's go take a quick peek on the garden. I still haven't gotten around to getting the mulch on this potato patch up here. We did get the other potato patch all planted and mulched, but Dan's tractor is actually up on the mountain right now where he's logging and it was so slippery he couldn't get it down here to move a bale over for me. So I have to wait till it dries out a little bit, but I'm hoping to get it covered up before the heat wave that we're supposed to be having in the next couple of days hits so that I can retain all this moisture from all this rain in that patch. Potatoes really like uh, consistent moisture in the ground and they tend to get scab on them or scab is more prevalent anyway when uh, you experience drought conditions and I find mulch works really well to keep them staying moist all summer. My happy place my friends. <laughs> so I got a bunch of the winter squash planted in over here and down the side some flowers and zucchini. The peas are coming up along here and then I have started to plant lettuce along the peas, I usually plant lettuce a like a foot and a half or so out from where the peas are. And the nice thing about doing this is lettuce tends to bolt in the heat and the peas shade them out a little bit. We have all of our pickling cucumbers planted in along here, a bunch more squash, some more squash down there, carrots all planted in here. And when I looked yesterday, I did see some little carrots along with some weeds <laughs> popping up there. So that's exciting. And I have started to build a willow trellis here. It's not finished yet. I'm going to put a peaked roof on it, but it's turning out pretty awesome so far. I have some beans. These are scarlet runner beans planted in here. And these are looking a little sad, my nasturtiums, but they'll fill out that whole space there and it'll look really pretty. And I have some more planted in over on this side, but they haven't come up yet. We have our herb bed all planted. Also needs to be weeded here. So we have onions here. We have beets and I noticed that my beets are starting to come up along with turnips. Look at all the turnips coming up. All this is just grass from my weed whacking because I was weed whacking the pathways yesterday. We have celery and leeks and calendula. This is called apple mallow and my friend Corinne gave me these seeds so I planted those along here. More carrots in here, green beans onions, planted some zinnia right here, some fennel, some little cabbages, lettuce, not leeks, <laughs> the leeks are over here. And then this, these are all rainbow carrots. This is my youngest little veggie garden. And she planted some cucumbers here and made this little trellis for them to climb up. Garlic looking good. And then there's flowers all the way along here. And over here 
is where I put the new potato patch. So I just tilled this square. That was a heck of a lot of work. I haven't used a hand tiller in a long time, but uh, tilled this up, planted the potatoes in here and then covered it up with this sedge grass. So sedge grasses are a type of grass that doesn't have a lot of seed in it. It usually grows down in the swampy areas. Um, this isn't from our farm, this is from a friend's farm, but it works really well for a mulch because it doesn't have all of those weed seeds in it. So we have a bunch of different kinds, our Irish cobbler, German butterball, blue mac down there, and then some miscellaneous ones I had. I did give the rest of the seed potatoes that I had away to one of my neighbors, which I was really happy to do because I had way too many. Then my daughter's little flower garden over there. So it's coming along slowly but surely. Now it's just a waiting game until everything really starts to grow. Um, down here, I have started putting in my corn. I still have a couple uh, more uh, corn to put in this area. And then I have my brassicas in all up here and I still have this row that I need to get covered, which I better get on right away. Really good idea to cover your brassicas as soon as you get them in the garden because Cabbage moths can come in fairly early. I haven't seen one yet this year, but I'm sure there's a few around. I still have the odd tray of flowers that I need to find places for, but for the most part, the garden is fully planted out. Oh, this is something else I did. I brought one of the arbors that was in, or archways, that was in the forest garden over here because I really wanted one for um, the stairs that go down to where my high tunnel is. And I like the way that looks. I've had to move the stairs over. They're not quite finished yet, but close. And I have been running my drip irrigation, which I love. My tomatoes are just looking so much happier than they were. All of the new foliage that's coming on is nice and green and healthy looking. My peppers are starting to look a little bit better. The new leaves that are coming on are nice and green, which is good. We're supposed to be getting some heat, which is great because all of these plants will really perk up with, um, with some heat, especially the peppers. I do have a shade cloth that I'll be putting on the high tunnel. I usually just keep it over here on the north end and then pull it over when it's really hot. So anytime it's around 25 degrees Celsius or hotter, I pull the shade cloth over. Otherwise it just gets way too hot in here but we can actually run over and shut the water off because everything is nicely watered now. And we ended up having to move our meat birds in back into the barn because we had a raven that was attacking them and actually killed one of them. So I've had this happen with ravens before, but not for probably 15 years. And uh, normally I won't put my meat birds out until they're big enough that they're not usually an issue because once they're big enough, the ravens don't attack them. But I didn't want to risk losing any more. So they went back in the barn, but I will bring them back out probably tomorrow, I think, and put them back on the pasture because I really don't like keeping them in the barn. These chickens right here, this hen, that hen, that hen, and this rooster, I cannot, keep them in the barn, no matter what I do. <laughs> Digging around in the compost pile, finding all the bugs, which I guess is good. I think that is about it for the garden. It is just so beautiful. One thing this rain did is help our hay grow, which is just fantastic because we had, we didn't have a great hay year last year at all. And I think we're gonna have a decent one this year. Alrighty, let's head back up to the house and see where all our food's at. All right, friends, all of our delicious food is done. I'm just waiting for the ice cream before I actually taste test the cake. But here are our cookies. Don't they look good? Our finished curry chutney, some lovely loaves of bread. I was just saying to Dan that I really hope that it tastes as good as it looks because it is definitely company worthy cake. So let's try one of our cookies. I wanna get a bite that has the um, rhubarb in it. This is good, I like it. I like the sourness of the um, rhubarb with the nuts, with kind of that richness of the nuts and the sweetness of the chocolate chips. I think white chocolate chips would definitely be kind of a more well-matched flavor with the rhubarb than the regular chocolate chips, but 
it's still perfectly delicious just like this and I know my kids are going to love it. So I'll be back with you when that ice cream's done and we'll try some of this pistachio yogurt rhubarb cake, which I cannot wait to try. All right, friends, our ice cream is done. It is time to try this beautiful cake that I have to admit to being quite excited about trying. And I did with the rest of the rhubarb, made a little bit of rhubarb topping. A little bit of sugar, vanilla, some butter, and the rhubarb. Oh my goodness. This is spectacular. Oh my goodness. So the cake, you can taste the pistachios in it, and there's little chunks of pistachio. It's very light in flavor it's not super sweet it's not really rich it's kind of perfect for me because it's one of my complaints about cakes in general is that they tend to be a bit too rich for me but combined with the tartness of the rhubarb and the sweet ice cream wow <laughs> okay that is a winner I will be double and triple sure to make sure that I link all of these recipes. My kids tried the cookies and agreed with me that the white chocolate chips that the recipe called for would be better, but they thought they were absolutely delicious and asked for seconds. So that's good. Um, they will try this cake, but I have absolutely no doubt in the world that they are going to absolutely love it. We'll have this for dessert with dinner tonight. I do have my ice cream recipe listed on my website and I'll try to remember to link that for you as well. If you would like to get on my newsletter, I do share recipes, tips, sometimes just newsy newsletters once a week. And then whenever I am launching a new product or I am sharing a new recipe or anything like that, people on my newsletter list are usually the first to know. So I'll put a link for that. The show notes are gonna be full today <laughs> down in the show notes below. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.